There's a few small holes on your airplane that are used to tell you how fast you're going, how high you are, and your rate at which that you're ascending or descending. And if any of these holes get clogged up by something like dirt, an insect, or even ice, then you could get false readings on your instruments. This is all a part of the pedostatic system, and by the end of this video, you will have a really good understanding of how it works and the most common types of errors that are caused by clogs within the pedostatic system. Hello everyone, my name is Steve, the Wired Flyer, and I break down aviation concepts in the simplest way possible. Today's video is all about the pedostatic system, so let's not waste any more time, and dive right in. What is the pedostatic system? It's a network of pressure sensors that mechanically power key instruments such as the airspeed indicator, altimeter, and vertical speed indicator. And the pedostatic system measures two types of pressure, total pressure in the pedo tube and static pressure through the static port. Now, static pressure is the atmospheric ambient air pressure. So you might not notice it, but at all times there are air molecules pushing on everything in our atmosphere. Static pressure changes with your altitude and the higher that you go, then the lower the static pressure. Whereas the lower you go, the higher the static pressure. Then there is also the pedal pressure, which is the total pressure. And that is sensed in a pitot tube on the airplane measuring the ram air entering the pitot tube, which is the dynamic pressure from the forward motion of the airplane, basically the air flowing over the wings, as well as the static atmospheric pressure. The three instruments that are powered by the pitostatic system are the airspeed indicator, altimeter, and lastly, the vertical speed indicator. Now, the only indicator that uses both the pitot pressure and the static pressure is the airspeed indicator. The airspeed indicator works by measuring the difference between the total pressure measured in the pitot tube and the static pressure, which is measured through the static port. And that's because the issue with the pitot tube is that it's measuring both the static air pressure and the ram air entering the pitot tube. So you have to kind of subtract that static air pressure it's measuring by measuring the difference between the total pressure and the static pressure. So basically the formula is very simple. It's the total pressure measured in the pitot tube subtracted by the static pressure in the static port, which gives you the dynamic pressure. So your airspeed indicator displays your dynamic pressure. And the altimeter and the vertical speed indicator only use the static pressure to display their readings. And the altimeter is basically reading the atmospheric pressure. And the lower the atmospheric pressure is, then the higher the altimeter will read. And the higher the static pressure, then the lower the altimeter will read. And then there's the vertical speed indicator, which is measuring the rate of change in your altitude. So it's measuring the rate of change within the static pressure. This gives you your climb or descent rate. Now let's look into the pitot tube and the static port a little bit more and how they work. The pitot tube is a forward-facing tube typically installed on the wings or somewhere at the front of the aircraft, but it's placed somewhere out of the way of the prop wash so you don't get wrong false readings and it captures the total pressure. Now the pitot tube can give us false readings just because it's in a fixed position. So during different moments in flight, you might be flying at a different angle of attack. And an example of that would be having your flaps down, which will cause the air to flow into the pitot tube on a different angle. So it's not directly going in to the pitot tube. So it gives you a slightly false reading. Now you can find the corrected readings for these different configurations you're flying in, in the pilot's operating handbook. The pitot tube also has a drain hole in the back just in case some water enters the tube it has a place to escape out the back. It also includes a couple heating elements so you can turn on the pitot heat just in case ice starts to form inside of the pitot tube. You can melt that ice away and get your instruments back up and running. And as we went over, the pitot pressure is only used to power the airspeed indicator. We also have the static port, which is a series of holes mounted to the fuselage, which measure the static or still ambient air, the atmospheric pressure. And it provides static pressure to the airspeed indicator, altimeter, 
and vertical speed indicator. And it's critical for the air around the static port to be undisturbed. You know, you wouldn't want the prop wash or some form of air to disturb the atmospheric readings as it's meant to be measuring the still air. And most planes have more than one static port just for redundancy. Now let's go over pitot-static failures. Now, most errors caused by the pitot-static system are going to be due to blockages, and blockages can come in many different forms. The pitot tube could be clogged, or the drain hole in the back could be clogged, or you could also have the static ports clogged. Now, depending on what hole is plugged in the sensors, you're going to get different errors within the readings of the instruments. Some common blockages within the pitot-static system could be from insects, dirt, ice, but not really water, as there is a drain hole, like we said, um, unless that water is able to turn into ice within the pitot tube, then you could get a blockage from that. And that's when you would turn the pitot heat on. So if the pitot tube is blocked, but the drain hole is still opened, then you're going to get some errors in your readings. Your airspeed indicator will actually go to zero because it lost its ram air, but it is still measuring the static air in the drain hole. So the static pressure from the static pour and the static pressure from the pitot cancel each other out, giving a reading on the airspeed indicator of zero. But that plays no effect with the altimeter or the vertical speed indicator, and they will continue to function properly. Now, if the pitot tube and the drain hole are both clogged and the static ports are still open, then the airspeed indicator is going to freeze at the reading where the ram air was trapped in the pitot tube. And then the airspeed indicator is only going to display minor changes with altitude as the static port is still working. So as you increase altitude, the airspeed indicator will slightly increase. And as you descend, the airspeed indicator will slightly decrease. And of course, the altimeter and vertical speed indicator will both be functioning as the static ports are open. Now, if the static port is clogged, then you will get errors in all three instruments, the airspeed indicator, altimeter, and vertical speed indicator. So basically, when the static air pressure is trapped in the static pore, it's going to be measuring the atmospheric air at that altitude. So the static pressure is going to be trapped at, let's just say, a thousand feet. So when you're flying nice and level and the static port is closed, then the airspeed indicator might just be working properly in a sense because that static pressure is trapped at, let's just say, a thousand feet. So when you're flying at a thousand feet, the reading will be right. But when you start to climb, then the airspeed indicator will actually under read because the static pressure that's trapped within the static system is higher than the actual atmospheric pressure because as you gain altitude the static pressure goes down and the airspeed indicator will thereby overread in a descent and underread in a climb and if the static ports clog then the altimeter will freeze and the vertical speed indicator will be stuck at zero and that's why many aircraft are equipped with more than one static port now it's time for a fun fact break the glass. If your static port gets clogged and you don't have an alternate static port, there is an old school emergency fix. You can break the glass on the vertical speed indicator and breaking the glass would allow the static pressure of the cockpit to enter the static line. Now it's not 100% accurate as cabin pressure is different than atmospheric pressure, but it's certainly better than flying blind. In an emergency, break the glass. So that's it for this one. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. Please, I encourage you to check out some of my other videos. I make weekly content on different aviation topics you must know and understand to be a successful pilot. Join me on my journey from wires to wings, from electrician to pilot at 30 years old, and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, keep learning, stay motivated, and chase your dreams. Let's go.